You know, I just want to share God's word this morning. And um, as I was reflecting on this, I heard about this dear lady who started to meditate and get a hold of God's word. Now, one night as she was going to sleep, she heard someone breaking into her house and she thought, oh no, what am I going to do? You know, I live all by myself. There's no one here to help. Now, the first thing that came to her was she screamed out, Acts 2, 38. Now, to her surprise, the robber stood still in his tracks and didn't move until the police came. And he just froze there and the police were very curious. And as they were hauling him away, they said, hey, what was it about that scripture that made you freeze? He goes, what scripture? He goes, all I heard was the lady said that she had an axe and two thirty-eight. <laughs> so this morning, I just want to share about one of the most important revelations that we can get from the word of God, which is to know and understand who we are in Christ. You know, in a world that constantly bombards us with images and, you know, messages about who we should be, you know, it's easy to lose sight of our true identity. You know, we often find ourselves measuring our self-worth, you know, by worldly social standards, struggling with self-doubt and confusion. But as believers in Christ, we are called to a higher understanding of who we truly are in Christ. You know, the concept of self-image is not merely about how we see ourselves outwardly, meaning like in the mirror, but it goes way deeper, touching the inner core of our inner man and how we see ourselves in relation to God and His Word. You know, our self-image influences every aspect of our life, our thoughts, our actions, our interactions, which is a vital part of our mental, emotional and health and well-being. Now, I'm not sure about you, but if you haven't noticed, there's a real attack on identity and how we are to fit in today's society. So identity and knowing who you are is very relevant for today because people just want to, you know, feel like they are important and they belong. People want to belong in certain places, right? Now, how many here, um, you know, many want to identify with a certain movement. Maybe some want to identify with a political agenda. Why? Because they just want to belong and feel like they're making a real difference in society, So identity and identifying oneself is very important. Now, what do you think would happen to a whole generation if they lost their true identity? Now, I'm not too sure about that, but I think we can see the beginning stages of it occurring. So knowing who you are and being confident of our identity is vitally important in today's society. Likewise, knowing your identity in Christ is a cornerstone of a life filled with peace, joy and fulfillment. Knowing who you are in Christ must also be a dangerous threat to the kingdom of darkness. Do you know what the first thing that the devil attacked when Jesus was in the wilderness? Let's have a look at Matthew chapter 4 verses 1 to 4. Then Jesus, when he was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil, after fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. Now the tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Now we can see here that the first area that the devil attacked was Jesus' identity. He came to Jesus and said, If you are the Son of God, then do this. Now we know here that if is the badge of doubt. Now, think about what the devil was trying to do here to Jesus. Now, the first thing he did is he attacked his identity by questioning the Son of God and saying to him, if you are the Son of God. Now, he fired an arrow of doubt, attempting him to question his identity. Then he followed this up by getting Jesus to operate in works of the flesh. So he wanted Jesus to do something. The question is, does God love us based on what we do, based on our works and based on our efforts? No, he doesn't, right? Now think about, you know, thank God Jesus was confident in who he was and he didn't fall for that old trick. Now if the devil came and did that to Jesus, do you think he's going to come and do the same to you and I? So what about us who are believers? How can we be confident in our identity in Christ? Well, Knowing who you are in Christ is the cornerstone of a life filled with peace, joy, and fulfillment. 
It's understanding that our identity is, is not anchored in our achievements. It's not anchored in our possessions. It's not anchored in the approval of others, but in the unchanging truth of God's word. Identifying with Christ will change the way we live and cause you and I to rise and live above adversity. But not knowing our identity in Him will keep us living far below our rights and our privileges. So what does it mean to identify with Christ? Well, let's have a look at what 2 Corinthians 5.17 says. It should be a familiar verse to us, but let's read it. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I want you to read that same passage out of the Living Bible. The Living Bible says when someone becomes a Christian, he becomes a brand new person inside. He is not the same anymore. A new life has become. Okay, so this powerful verse reveals that our true identity in Christ, as it speaks of an amazing transformation that takes place on the inside, the real you, the spirit man. So to understand this fully, we must consider several key aspects of what it means to be a new creation and how this redefines our new identity in Christ. So the first key aspect is a radical transformation takes place. Well, where does it take place? Well, when Paul says the new creation has come, he emphasizes that by accepting Jesus into our lives, that this indicates that a radical transformation has taken place where? On the inside of a person. This is not just a superficial change, but a complete renewal of our inner man, our spirit man, our eternal man. Now, the old self marked with sin, guilt, that separated us from God at one stage is now replaced by a new self, a new nature. Now, this transformation signifies a fresh start, a spiritual rebirth that regenerates our entire being. Yet you're no longer just a forgiven sinner. You know, I hear people say, oh, I'm just a forgiven, forgiven sinner saved by grace. No, you are now the righteousness of God in Christ. You can stand in the presence of God like you've never sinned before. That should be exciting. That should be something to praise and worship God about. Amen? Now, I've just got an example just for an illustration purpose. You know, think about an old house that gets a total refurb inside. Now, it gets new floors, new walls, new ceilings, new kitchen, new bathroom. Everything gets changed and renovated. But it's the same old house with the same old shell on the outside but the inside has been totally renovated and restored. This too is similar with the new man after we get born again. It's been renovated within. You're still the same on the outside, but the inward man has been totally changed and made new. Second key aspect is freedom from the past. Now the phrase the old is gone assures us that our past with all its mistakes, sin and failures no longer defines who you are in Christ. See, we are forgiven. We are set free from all the bondages from our past. Now this freedom is vital in developing a healthy self-image as it allows you and I to let go of all our past burdens, regrets that may have previously shaped your identity. We're no longer bound by our former selves, but we are now liberated to live this life out in our new identity in Christ. You know, the problem with a lot of believers is, you know, they get saved, but they don't allow the past to be done away with. You know, they still remember all the wrong things that they've done, all the mistakes that they've made, and who they were prior to their conversion. But the good news is, is that God doesn't remember it anymore, so then why should you and I remember it? If you've truly repented it and put it under the blood, then we can live a free life in Christ. So, third key aspect is we have a new identity in Christ. Being a new creation means that our identity is now rooted in Christ. This new identity is characterized by the fruit of the Spirit, which is found in Galatians chapter 5, 22. Love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, goodness, and self-control. You know, our thoughts and our actions and our purposes are now aligned with God's will and God's purposes Redefining the character of Christ in our life, which signifies 
that we are no longer living just for ourselves, but we are now living for Him. As He died, we died. When He was raised, we were raised. So our identifying with Christ means that our lives are now totally intertwined with His life. Galatians chapter 2, verses 20 says, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life that I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and who gave himself up for me. Now, this scripture says that we have been crucified with Christ, but not only did we die with him on the cross, but we've also been raised with him and we can live out this new life in him. You know, as we partook of communion this morning, as David led us through communion as a church family, we were intertwined, interwoven with him. Him. See, we too share in the death, the burial, and the resurrection, symbolizing the death of our old sinful nature and the birth of our new righteous nature in Christ. This union with Christ empowers us to live victoriously as He lives and through us in our daily lives. It's a relationship that continually shapes and molds our character, leading us to become more like Him on a daily basis. You know, again, like I said before, it's normal for people to identify with something or someone, as I mentioned before, as it makes us feel connected, it makes us feel important, it makes us feel that we're doing something to change society. You know, we identify either with a person, an organization, uh, an occupation, a nationality, or even a church community. Now, in the same way that we have an identity in the natural realm, we also have one in the spirit realm. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 to 6 says, But God, who rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised up together and made to sit together in the heavenly places in Christ. So according to this passage of Scripture, you and I right now, if you're in Christ, you are seated with him in the heavenly places. Unfortunately, some Christians, though, have an identity crisis, meaning they don't know who they are in Christ and they don't know where they're seated. So instead of, bless you, so instead of identifying with Christ, they identify with their problems that confront them. Now, you can tell this because they recognize themselves by their problems and they say things like, hey, my problem is this or so forth, and they identify with their problems. Or maybe some identify with a profession. They say things like, I'm a salesman, you know, I'm a lawyer. But the truth is that that's only their profession. That's not who they really are. It's only what they do. Others identify with a disease that may be attacking their body. They say things like they're a diabetic, they're ADD, they're slow, they're incapable of working or even socializing. But when we understand our true identity in Christ and who we are in Him, that changes the way we live and the way we think. Again, 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, If anyone is in Christ, is anyone in Christ here? You're a new creation. All things have passed away. All things have become new. So before we were in Christ, we were destined for death and destruction. We were destined for despair, degradation, poverty. But the Bible says in John 10.10, 10, but now in Christ, we are destined for life and life more abundantly. In 1 John 2.25, in Christ, we are destined for life and life eternal. In Christ is where our identity should be. It's in Jesus that you and I are somebody. Now, did you ever notice in Scripture that God often changes people's identities? You know, they looked at themselves one way, or maybe they thought they were a certain way because that's what people told them all their lives. But God told them who they really were. Now, this is what happened to Gideon. Gideon had a low self-image of himself. And the way that he saw himself was very distorted. So he was so terrified of the Midians, for the Midianites, that he hid himself in a wine press to thresh the wheat. Now he believed that the Midianites would take what little he had as they saw him threshing grain. But in Judges chapter 6, verses 12, was a defining point in Gideon's life. The angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon and said, 
The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Now, Gideon was shocked when he heard this statement and he looked around and he goes, mighty warrior? Who, me? He goes, you got the wrong guy here, God. He said, my family is the least of the tribes. I'm the least of my family. He goes, you got the wrong guy. Does this resonate with anybody? So he was acting anything like a mighty warrior here. Why? Because Gideon self saw himself, unfortunately, as a failure based on his identity and based on his past and his natural standpoint. But only when God saw him the way he was supposed to be was Gideon able then to be used by God to deliver the Israelites. God also changed Abram's name. It was impossible for Abram and Sarai to bear children. But, God, but how could God suggest such a promise to them as they were well beyond childbearing years? But see, unlike God, he sees what you and I don't see. In Genesis 17 verse 5, it says that your name will be Abraham, for I have made you a father of many nations. So God said, no longer will you be called Abram, but Abraham. And in Genesis 17 15, God also changed Sarai's name to Sarah. And God's word came to pass when Sarah finally gave birth to a son. God calls those things that be not as though they are, according to Romans 4.17. Now in the natural realm, you may not yet see what God is calling you to accomplish. You may look around and it seems impossible for it ever to come to pass. But see, that's the difference between us and God. See, God sees what we don't see. So we, what do we need to do? We need to then look at ourselves and see ourselves and even speak about ourselves the same way that God speaks about you and I. Now, how can we find this? Well, we can find this in God's Word. Now, for your benefit as well, for those that grabbed one of these, I put some scriptures on here for you guys to take home, declare, and meditate on it on a daily basis so that we can renew our minds with the Word of God. So we are new creatures in Christ. This is what God's Word says about you and I. We're new creatures in Christ. We are the righteousness of God in, God, in Christ. We have been healed. We have been made rich. We are accepted in God. We are now free from sin. Psalm 23, 4 says, Ye though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And you can say that verse like this. Even though I walk through all the mess the devil tries to put on me, I'm not going to fear any evil. So through our identification in Christ, we can walk on snakes and scorpions and not be harmed. You know, I can walk on anything that the devil tries to put in my way and I will overcome victoriously. It's high time for you and I to stand up and say and be who God has called us to be. We need to let the devil know that we know who we are in Christ. Anytime he tries to attack you and I, you can throw your shoulders back and say, not this time, devil. So when you identify with Christ, God gives you and I a new identity. Instead of sinner, you're called a Christian. Instead of lost, you are called found. Instead of enemy, you are now called friend, son, beloved of God. Instead of unrighteous, you are now called righteous. Instead of sick, you are called healed. Instead of poor, you are called rich. When you understand your new identity in Christ, you'll be a stronger and a more stable believer. Your faith will work better for you. Your prayer life will be totally changed and enhanced. And you will walk on a new level of authority because you identify with Christ and you have become the person that God has called you to be. Now, someone once wrote this, and I thought this was good. He said that Christianity made people who were nothing into sons and daughters of God. It gave those who had no respect their self-respect. It gave those who had no life, life eternal. It told men that even if they didn't matter to other men, they still mattered intensely to God. It told men who in the eyes of the world were worthless, that in the eyes of God they were worth the death of, their, of His Son. Christianity was and still is the most uplifting thing in the entire world. So once you know your new identity in Christ, your life will be forever changed and transformed. 
So I'm just going to go over some characteristics of this new identity in Christ and what it means to you and I. Number one characteristic of our new identity in Christ is we must have a genuine fellowship with God and with one another. One of the most defining characteristics of a true Christian is the fellowship that we have with God and with one another. Now, a student once asked his rabbi this question. He said, why didn't the Lord furnish enough manna to Israel for a year all at one time? The teacher said, I'm going to answer you with a parable. He said, once there was a king who had a son to whom he gave a yearly allowance, paying him the entire sum all in one day. So what happened on that day, which the allowance was due, was the only day that the father ever saw his son. So the king changed his plans and gave his son day by day that which was sufficient for him. So then the son would visit his father on a daily basis every morning. Oh, how he needed his father's unbroken love, compassion, wisdom, and giving on a daily basis. You know, we too need to come to God on a daily basis, just like the son that only approached his father to receive his daily allowance. We too need to check our walk and our fellowship, which needs to be genuine, seeking God's heart and not just his hand. You know, Psalm 145 verses 18 says that, The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. 1 John 1 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses you and I from all sin. Number two characteristic of a new life, of a new identity in Christ is renewing the mind daily with the word of God. Romans chapter 12 verses 1 to 2. It says, do not be conformed by the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and his perfect will. You know, renewing our mind means changing the way that we used to think and how we used to be in the world. So instead of following worldly patterns, maybe doing things the way that the world does things, we need to now renew our minds, have them renewed so we can do the, the things the way the kingdom works and the way the king operates. And we need to focus on whatever is true, noble, and just worthy. We should start our day by reading the word of God, by prayer and meditating on the word of God daily before we do anything. So that when we're faced with important decisions to make throughout our day, that we can choose what lines up and what aligns with God's will. Letting your thoughts, letting your actions be guided by his word and allowing the Holy Spirit to move through us. For example, if you're tempted to gossip and speak negatively about a situation or even someone, stop and think and say, will this change my situation by speaking negatively? Or will this be pleasing to God if I say this about this particular person? If not, then remain silent. What about Should I accept this job opportunity or should I even date this person? Well, when you you need to make important decisions throughout your day, first check in God's word. Pray and seek the guidance from the Holy Spirit. Rather than just go off, you know, worldly wisdom or even just living off the top of our head or even what majority say out there. By doing this, you will find a similar situation in the word of God pertaining to your situation. And you'll also hear the Holy Spirit advise you in which direction to go in. So renewing our minds is our responsibility when we get saved, when we get born again. God's will for us is to be whole, spirit, soul, and body. But see, it's our job, it's our role to renew our minds with the Word of God daily. Characteristic number three of our new identity is putting off the old man. In Ephesians chapter 5, for, uh, sorry, Ephesians chapter 4, 22 to 24. It says, You were taught with regards to the former way of life to put off the old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your mind, and to put on the new self created to be like God in righteousness and holiness. You know, again, it's our role to put off the old man and the old self, our old way, abandoning sin and terrible behaviors 
You know, this requires a daily commitment and a conscious effort from our behalf, partnering with the Holy Spirit. See, if you struggle with anger, impatience, or any other form of sin, first acknowledge it, repent, then seek God's help through prayer and accountability. For instance, if you're you know, getting angry quickly, or you know, take a moment to pray for patience and understanding. Maybe replace those harsh words with gentle words. Surround yourself with fellow believers who can support and encourage you in your new transformation. Fourth characteristic of a new identification in Christ is we need to then clothe ourselves. You know, it's winter. I'm sure a lot of ladies put on extra layers and they like to put on extra clothing. In the same way, we are to clothe ourselves with God. Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 to 14. Therefore, as God's children, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with one another and forgive one another. If any of you have any grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. So clothing ourselves with Christ-like virtues means on purpose changing your actions, showing love and forgiveness in our interactions, making it a daily goal and a daily practice, you know, compassion and kindness when dealing with family, friends or co-workers, being patient and even humble with them, especially when someone wrongs you. Remember the forgiveness that you and I have received through Christ and extend that same grace that you've received to other people. You know, we need to let love guide all our actions and let it be the foundations of all our daily interactions. I just want to get the worship team to come up as I close this morning. I'm going to have a drink. So by applying these scriptures in our daily lives, we will create and reinforce this new image that we have in Christ. When we have intimate fellowship with God and with other fellow believers, when we renew our minds with the Word of God, when we put off the old self and clothe ourselves with virtues that reflect the character of Jesus, that's when we will walk with this new nature when, as we receive Christ. Let's commit to living out these daily principles and allowing the Holy Spirit to work in and through us on a daily basis. Let our lives be a testament of His love and His faithfulness in our life. You know, when we allow all these characteristics to define who we are as believers, we will bear the kind of fruit that gives glory to God, the Father, and build His kingdom. We will allow God and His Word to define our true identity that we have in Christ. This year, we're believing that God wants us to walk in abundance according to our theme scripture, Psalm 65, 11. And He also wants us to be victorious and to be overcomers in all of life's situations. There will be some here that may need to rededicate their lives and their walk with Him in a deeper way. There may be others that need to rededicate you know, your time with prayer and even studying God's Word on a deeper level. Whatever area it needs to be, let's be obedient so that God can fulfill all that He has in and through our lives so that we can build and fulfill the Kingdom of God in our lives. Can we stand this morning as we worship the King of Kings? Amen.